Again, I'm Lake County Board Chairman Aaron Waller. I'm joined here with our County Administrator, Barry Burton, and our Chief County uh, Communications Officer, Jenny Vanna. We're so excited you, you joined us tonight. Uh, the County Board and I are very uh, privileged to serve you and looking forward to hearing your questions. Uh, tonight is about uh, telling you a little bit about what's going on in Lake County government on issues that impact your daily life, including property taxes, transportation, public safety. And it's the third telephone town hall meeting that we've had uh, to talk about uh, transparency, making sure that we're delivering a county government that is responsive to you. Again, uh, we're going to start here in a couple minutes, but maybe, Jenny, if you could cover the ground rules for this evening about uh, the callers and uh, our calls and you know, how we're going to um, do this. Sure thing, <laughs> Chairman Lawler. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight and participating in this telephone town hall meeting. Uh, so I just want to remind you that this meeting is funded by tax dollars, so we want to keep it focused on government issues and not discuss politics. And we won't have time to take every caller. Um, when you are interested in talking to the chairman and presenting a question or a concern, you can press zero at any time, and you'll be connected. We're going to try and take as many callers as we can during this hour-long telephone town hall meeting. So you'll be placed in a queue, and um, you'll be able to continue to listen to the meeting. Um, and also, we are going to ask some polling questions along the way. And we'll present those questions to you, and you can answer by pressing the number on your telephone. Uh, so I'll give reminders throughout the meeting, and again, we're happy to have you on the line. And again, if you're just joining us, I'm Lake County Board Chairman Aaron Lawler, and this is your Lake County Government Telephone Town Hall Meeting. So let's get right into it. I, I think it's important for us to start with a, a brief recap of the county, our budget, and how we're structured. A, a lot of people don't know all of the services that were required by law to uh, fund and provide. Uh, particularly uh, public safety, uh, funding the 19th Circuit Court, uh, but also investing in transportation infrastructure, health services, uh, and everything from uh, recorded documents to property assessment, property tax functions, uh, and voting. Uh, we administer elections. We serve veterans. We also provide water and sewer service. Uh, every restaurant that you eat, uh, eat at in Lake County is inspected by the Lake County Health Department to make sure food is safe. And we work uh, a lot uh, in Lake County. Uh, it's called Lake County for a reason, uh, to control flooding and protect the quality of our rivers and streams. Uh, we also spend a great deal of our time working on economic development and uh, seeking to attract and retain businesses like Caterpillar that marked our 12th Fortune 500 uh, headquarters right here in Lake County. We're so glad to have them in Deerfield uh, as a part of our thriving uh, business community uh, that includes 30,000 businesses and one of the best qualified workforces in the country uh, of about 400,000 people. Um, unemployment's at a 10-year low, and we've actually created, uh, through our business partners, our businesses have created 3,200 jobs in the past, uh, past couple years here. Uh, but let's start with a polling question, get right into it. And, Jenny, if you could read uh, the question and we'll get started. Sure. Um, Chairman Lawler, I just want to encourage everyone, if you do have a question that's on top of your mind, go ahead and press zero, and we can place you in the queue and start taking some of those callers after we do this first polling question. So go Great. ahead and press zero. But I will read that question. So um, what is the most important issue currently facing Lake County? And so press 1 if it's public health and human services. Press 2 if it's crime and public safety. Press 3 if it's transportation and traffic congestion. Press 4 if it's property taxes. And press 5 if you think it's the local economy, including jobs. And again, the question is, what is the most important issue that you feel is facing Lake County? And again, go ahead and press zero if you want to be connected, and, and we'll take callers. So we really encourage you to do that because we can start picking those callers at any time. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm going to repeat the options for the most important issue facing Lake County. Number one, public health and human services. Two, crime and public safety. Three, transportation and traffic congestion. Four, property taxes, and five, local economy, including jobs. Well, we've got about 10% uh, percent of people responding, and we'll leave that question open for a second, but the early front runner is uh, people concerned about property taxes. Uh, it's, it's no surprise that this is a number one issue. It's something that the county board is very focused on, uh, but it's important to first remember 
who sets the rules? And that's the state of Illinois. Uh, I believe our property tax system is broken, uh, and we need to make sure that uh, people understand that it's state law that sets everything from uh, how your property assessment is determined to every line on your tax bill and how local units of government can tax and the, the limits that they can tax to even if those exist and if they're giving us the authority to consolidate government in a more efficient manner. Uh, Lake County uh, is about 7% on average uh, of your tax bill. That's the part that we control. Uh, 3% on average goes to the Forest Preserve, and the remaining 90% is controlled by local elected boards that you select through your April elections and a few appointed bodies. Uh, the county board is working hard to stretch every penny. Uh, we budget uh, to promote efficiencies, leverage technology, and cost-cutting measures uh, that hope to um, – uh, you know, make things more efficient and to make our budget lean and mean. Uh, we're also one of only a few governments in Illinois, uh, county governments, that maintains a AAA bond rating. Uh, but let's get right into our first caller. We have Tula uh, from Vernon Hills. Uh, you're on the line. Hi, Tula. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Oh, okay, thank you. All right, uh, what's your question tonight? Well, like I told the uh, other lady, my question is regarding the increase in taxes every year continuously, especially this year. Uh, you know, they really weren't like a hundred or anything. They were quite a bit high. And uh, like I told you, uh, my husband and uh, he's uh, disabled, and we're on a fixed income, and it's you know just crazy. We just have a small condo, and you know, like I said, it's going where uh, hopefully we'd be able to manage, you know, but the way the taxes are going is going to be very difficult. Yeah, well, let me touch base on that. Um, you know, first of all, it's important for taxpayers to make sure that they have all of the different homestead and property assessment um, exemptions that they are qualifying for, from your general homestead exemption our seniors need to make sure that they get the senior uh, homestead exemption. Uh, and if they qualify for the senior freeze, that's something to look at, too. Um, there are other exemptions, and it's important to look at, you know, those opportunities uh, as well. Uh, there's a lot of information on the county website. One of the things that we've tried not to do is just point the, Springfield, point the finger at Springfield. Uh, while they have the authority to set the rules on this, and we are implementing those rules, uh, it's, it's important for us to make sure that we are leading where we have the opportunity to make a difference, uh, and that's in um, promoting efficiencies that will reduce the overall property tax burden. Uh, just this year, and right in Vernon Hills, uh, we are promoting uh, dissolving or consolidating three different taxing bodies, one of those being the CV Drainage District. Uh, hasn't levied a tax in over 10 years, but that doesn't mean it can't next year. And so we successfully sought legislation was passed by both houses and is awaiting the governor's signature. Uh, we also pushed for the uh, consolidation of the Lakes Region Sanitary District in the northern, uh, northwestern part of the county. There, every time taxpayers flush their toilet, they pay four taxes and fees to three different units of government. It's not a good way. It's not a responsible way of running government, and we're seeking uh, to make that more efficient through state legislation, also awaiting the governor's signature. Uh, but the biggest opportunity where we have the authority to make a difference in Lake County is in the area of 911 consolidation. Uh, right now, we have 20 different boards overseeing 20 different dispatch centers. You compare that to other counties, they have one elected, uh, one board overseeing maybe three or six centers. Uh, we need to make sure that we are being efficient, that we're delivering a quality of service that is responsive uh, in this life-saving uh, government service uh, in a way that also I think will save a lot of money. Um, we budget up to uh, $3 million annually um, is uh, some of the initial uh, projections that we've seen, um, and we're working to get that into a more efficient uh, model, but it takes partnerships. Um, we're also um, really working to explore reform measures that will also, I think, uh, help uh, promote streamlining government through shared service models. Uh, right now, uh, you know, we have tw 230 different units of government, and that's uh, in, in Lake County alone. Um, 
Illinois has 7,000 more than any other state. And so we're seeking uh, to streamline that uh, through sharing services on back office functions. Why does every all of our 16 library districts, 23 park districts, 18 townships, uh, 52 municipalities, 49 police jurisdictions all need to have their own uh, finance, procurement, HR, uh, you know, public relations uh, individuals. We can do a lot through working together. That's right, Aaron. I just want to remind everybody that you can press zero at any time to present a question to Chairman Lawler or a comment. We have some callers we're going to take in just a moment. Just wanted to um, share some of the results from that first polling question. And no, no surprise, as Chairman Lawler said, 67% um, feel property taxes are the biggest issue facing Lake County. And um, it is property tax bill, um, you know, due time right now. And I know the Chief County Assessment Office is holding outreach sessions sessions um, to help taxpayers um, with the appeal process and understanding the assessment process. So everybody can check out the county's website. There really is a wealth of information there. And I'm sure we're going to get we're going to get more into the property tax issue with perhaps other callers. But uh, let's get right into our second polling question, which really focuses on uh, what you value. Mm -hmm. So the qu second question we have is what which of the following priorities would you most want Lake County to continue to pay if state funding is cut, and even if it means relying more on your property taxes. So I'm going to say that one more time. Which of the following priorities would you want Lake County to continue to pay if state funding is cut, even if it uh, means relying more on your property taxes? So number one, if it's health department services, such as mental health and addiction treatment programs. Two, if it's important to protect court services, such as divorce and civil services, probation and victim witness counselors. Three, if it's investing in transportation infrastructure, including maintaining and expanding the county highway system. Press four, if it's investments in technology, including systems that improve online access to services. Or press five, if you think it's public safety. That includes the Sheriff's Office Highway Patrol and 911 Dispatch. All right. Well, while we get those uh, calls going, let's go right into our next caller. Uh, Tom from Green Oaks, you're on the line. Well, hello, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. I, um, you, you may remember me. I used to be a mayor here in Green Oaks, and uh, I think you actually uh, worked for me one summer not too many years ago, <laughs> if you might recall. And uh, um, I, <clears throat> I think you've touched well on the property tax issue. That's certainly uppermost in many of my neighbors over here in Green Oaks. Uh, I'm ret I've been retired for several years, but it, it becomes more and more of a issue and I think you hit the nail on the head in terms of the number of taxing bodies that we have uh, in <clears throat> in Lake County but also in the state of Illinois overall. I remember a number of years ago going through the list here in our own uh, municipal area with all the drainage districts and so on and so forth and uh, also uh, I think it would be effective for the school districts to seriously look at their administrative costs of having separate districts and whatever. I think there's a lot of ways that there could be some improvement made in the in the overall tax burden, burden on people here in, in Lake County. But the other thing that strikes me uh, almost daily, even though I'm retired, is the transportation issue. Um, in the late afternoon or in the morning, uh, I just live a little bit east of uh, St. Mary's Road, uh, it's almost impossible to move, uh, particularly um, depending upon the time of day, going either east or west on 137 or 176 and some of the other major uh, east-west roads. Um, I know that uh, there are a number of initiatives looked into over the last several years, but uh, it really is becoming a problem. We're blessed in our county, as you well know, Aaron, with wonderful job opportunities and wonderful employers, but it becomes difficult for people that live uh, in areas west of where I live to get to work at the big um, uh, Abbott con con uh, facility, which is, uh, I can see it from my front window here. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, that becomes an economic issue for, for um, the county and, and for people living in Lake County. I don't know well, what the I solution is. I, well, uh, sorry, to, we want to get right into the question. Sorry, we're trying to take as many callers as possible, and I wanted to get right into kind of responding to that. I think uh, your point is so well taken. I appreciate it. Uh, 
that transportation is not just a, a moving logistics issue it's a, or a people moving issue. It's a quality of life issue, and it's an access to, uh, for talent, uh, access to talent issue for our businesses. Uh, I've spoken to our employers, large and small, uh, AbbVie, Horizon, uh, Horizon, Pfizer, and others, uh, and they are uh, concerned about their ability to access talent both through public transit opportunities as well as expanding our road uh, infrastructure. It's something that the county is incredibly focused on. We're investing a half a billion dollars over six years uh, in our roads uh, and uh, transportation system, and that's not just our county roads. Uh, the county did a challenge bond program uh, several years ago, about 10 years ago, when we first got the quarter cent sales tax revenue uh, to say we want to invest in those roads that are going to have the biggest impact in reducing transportation gridlock. Uh, that was Route 21 and 137 up in your neck of the woods, as well as Fairfield and 176. Uh, we did Rollins and uh, 83 uh, with a grade separation there, one of our most effective uh, projects yet, also our largest. But we've got to do more. And it comes down to uh, our ability to invest in transportation is constrained by the revenue sources that we have. Uh, we need the state to be a willing partner in this. We need a capital bill. It's been nearly uh, 10 years since we've gotten one, and we don't have sustainable funding sources for transportation. When you look at things like the gas tax and other things, they've lost their buying power since they were last implemented or increased uh, in the mid-90s, and it's time that the state legislature looked to that, and I think we have to be there at the table uh, to help with that discussion. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is our ability to have a thriving economy is directly linked to the health and uh, effectiveness of our infrastructure uh, and our transportation system. So, Aaron, I think we'll give a quick update on that last polling question where we asked um, the callers to um, kind of tell us about their priorities that they want Lake County to invest in if the state were to cut funds. And really, um, transportation came to the top of the list at about 32%, followed by the health department services at 25%. That's very, very interesting. And, you know, again, the state... Uh, just this past year, cut uh, our uh, quarter percent sales tax. They started charging us a collection fee, which is kind of like one of those nagging ATM fees when you don't go to your bank and you have to pay that extra $4 or $3. Uh, it was for the, the uh, collecting our own sales tax revenue. Uh, they're making bank on that, about $70 million a year, but it's $700,000 a year for Lake County uh, that would have gone into uh, investing in our transportation system. So we've got to make sure... Uh, that we are working on that. Health department is a huge part of what we do. Um, it is our largest department, and they care for not only 50,000 people uh, that are part of their primary care and uh, other areas, uh, but like I said, they do restaurant inspections, take care of lakes and river testing to make sure we have healthy waterways, something very important to Lake County. And they're also on the front lines with me in our fight uh, to make sure that we have a more equitable and accessible mental health care system, something I feel is the greatest moral imperative our leaders have a chance uh, to make a difference on. Uh, and we're going to talk more about that in a bit. Uh, but, Jenny, do you want to give an update on uh, how people can engage and ask a question? Sure thing. So just a reminder for everyone, um, at any point you can press zero and um, you can um, present a question or a concern to Chairman Lawler, and we're going to try to get to as many callers as possible. But if you can't stay on the line with us for the hour meeting, um, we, we plan to, to keep going until about 8 o'clock, um, you can press 9 at any time and um, listen and, and uh, leave a voicemail for us. But please be sure to leave us how to get in touch with you, whether it's by your email or phone number. If you want to hear back from us, uh, please leave your phone number or email. And, again, you can press 9 at any time to leave a voice. If you're ready to end the call and, and you're done listening um, or you can't stay on the line the, for the entire meeting, you can press 9. Great. Well, let's take a, another caller here. We've got Mark from Libertyville. Uh, Mark, you're on the line. Good evening. Hi there. Uh, I, what's your question? My question is relative, again, to the taxes. Um, Lake County, I've lived in for 30-some-odd years. Um, I enjoy the area. I think the pie that is so cut up with the uh, distribution to the county services, I think they've done a relatively good job. Um, not saying that they can't be fiscally responsible 
as they possibly can, but I think the schools are out of control. These Mm -hmm. entitlement programs that are funded through our taxes as well as the local school districts, it's almost as if they have no fiscal responsibility. I'm sure there is some, but again, when you have 70% of your tax dollar going toward the schools, it doesn't leave a whole lot left for the rest of the county. So then we suffer with public services. So my I, think, question is, uh, I think you raise a good point. And, you know, the the issue there is, as you mentioned, is you have 70% roughly of your tax bill that is decided by school districts who face mandates and pension obligations that are uh, rooted in, you know, Springfield, uh, but also local spending decisions. Uh, you know, we also see a lack of engagement in the April elections, where last time I think we had about 14% of voters countywide turn out to elect uh, their school boards. It's important for people to understand that while uh, they write their tax uh, payer, uh, tax bill uh, check to the county, which I, I well know and we all know is a painful experience, um, that we are the middleman in redistributing 90%, uh, 93% of those funds to other taxing bodies, and I think that uh, we have to look at uh, opportunities to be innovative, and it's it's hard for folks to, it's hard for districts and leaders to uh, change their mindsets and, and to do things differently, but look at what's going on right now in the Mundelein area, where you have a retiring uh, superintendent of the Mundelein Elementary School District, uh, who has, uh, between him and, and the superintendent of the high school district, they're working together. They're consolidating that function. There's going to be one superintendent over two school districts. That sets a very uh, strong message of leadership from the top. It's already been done in Lake Forest. It should be done in more places. We have 46, I believe, school districts, uh, roughly, uh, and a lot of them are one building, uh, one administration school districts. This is an opportunity for us to lead on uh, and for us to see uh, you know, intergovernmental cooperation not just in administration, uh, but in other areas uh, where we can share services and be more effective. Uh, One of the things that gets talked about a lot is consolidation, and that's an important thing to pursue. Uh, But we can do things faster and I think more efficiently with a potential greater impact if we're looking at some of these shared service models. Uh, And and the fact of the matter is uh, tax Property taxes are unsustainable, and we've got to make sure uh, that we are delivering in a manner that builds confidence in voters' uh, ability, uh, or voters' confidence in their government. Uh, another thing that we're working on that l- seeks to build more confidence in um, in government among our, our voters and taxpayers are a number of reforms that the county board is leading on. Uh, one of the things that I am passionate about is ending the practice in Illinois where uh, uh, where politicians draw districts through gerrymandering to pick their voters instead of truly allowing uh, voters to uh, select their elected officials. Uh, we've implemented a uh, government reform commission made up of thoughtful and notable individuals like retired Chief Judge and former U.S. Attorney Fred Foreman and retired uh, State Rep uh, Kathy Rigg uh, to look at reforms. They've made recommendations to the county board, and I hope that we're pursuing uh, redistricting reform as a way uh, to make sure that maps are drawn in a little bit more of a fair manner and that we can also um, uh, deliver a model that helps fix our broken state. But let's hear about what you think on this issue, and it's actually our next polling question. That's right, Aaron. So uh, do you support the county board adopting independent redistricting reform for county board districts that ends the practice of politicians picking their voters by drawing gerrymandered districts? Press 1 for yes, press 2 for no, or press 3 for I don't know. Maybe you just don't have enough information to make an informed decision at this time. I'm going to repeat the question. So do you support the county board adopting independent redistricting reform for county board districts? that ends the practice of politicians picking their voters by drawing gerrymandered districts. Press 1 for yes, press 2 for no, or press 3 for I don't know. All right. Well, let's see uh, how you feel about that. It's been an issue that uh, has been sought to uh, get on Illinois ballots. It's been blocked uh, by uh, members uh, leading the legislature, Speaker Madigan and others, 
but we hope to, again, be a model, not just on redistricting, but other areas that will reform government in a way that builds confidence among our taxpayers. Uh, early results are, are really, uh, I think, very uh, resounding. We got 72% of people that say yes, 8% uh, saying no, uh, and 20% not knowing about that. I'd encourage you to visit our county website. Uh, we've got a lot of information on our work in this effort, and it's something that I firmly believe is one step in the right direction to reforming government um, and making sure that we're putting voter interest and community needs ahead of politicians' self-interest and partisan interests. Um, so let's keep going uh, with the discussion. Uh, let's take uh, Barry from uh, Buffalo Grove. Barry, you're on the line. Uh, yes, my question relates to uh, primarily economic development. Uh, there's 10,000 people turning 65 every day of the week, and many of these people own businesses throughout the country. And, uh, and I work with these businesses to help them transition that business to the next generation um, or to uh, decide what they want to do, maybe sell the business. And one of the number one questions that I have when I deal with business owners in Illinois is, what can I do to leave Illinois because of the onerous real estate taxes, sales taxes, and income taxes? And, one of, and my question is, what is Lake County doing from an economic development basis to keep these businesses in, in Illinois and not go either across the border or to Indiana, Wisconsin, Iowa, or just closing up because they can no longer afford to be in business. Many well, uh, businesses, multi-generation, have closed up. Well, I think that is an excellent question, and it's something we struggle with every day. In fact, it's the thing uh, that keeps me up at night when I think about uh, the future of Lake County. We are so fortunate to have 12 Fortune 500 headquarters, um, you know, that locate here, but also our small and medium-sized businesses. Uh, I think that uh, a lot of the narrative goes around, um, you know, businesses fleeing uh, to Wisconsin, um, but the fact of the matter is, for every one job we've lost in Illinois, I think uh, the number is that we've gained about 6.25 back uh, or something like that, uh, but it's a very strong number that shows uh, what we're delivering on, which is really access to talent uh, issues. You know, at the end of the day, Wisconsin can give Foxconn, you know, billions of dollars uh, while they seek to pollute uh, our waterways and increase stormwater outputs, uh, sucking Lake Michigan, more water out of Lake Michigan. Uh, but the, the state of Wisconsin is giving away sec, ta uh, tax incentives like candy because they don't have a qualified workforce to be able to support uh, sustainable economic growth. Here in Lake County, we have 42% of our employees that have a bachelor's degree or higher. We've got an ecosystem of life science and biotech companies that are thriving because they all, I, I think, feed off each other in some respect uh, with employees moving uh, between those companies. But it's important that we also recognize our uh, advanced manufacturing sector, and that's something we've been very committed to. One of the things that I think we need to begin to recognize in Lake County is that college is not for everybody. And in fact, there are a lot of highly skilled uh, opportunities for people to um, be successful through the trades, through other skilled labor, and that's going to support uh, things like our mechatronics program and, and other things. What we've built out around that is a, a workforce ecosystem initiative that helps make sure that we're being responsive to employers' needs. They call us, they call Lake County Partners, uh, they call anybody that gets kind of fed our way, and we work with them to provide training opportunities where they can train individuals in hard-to-hire areas. Then we seek uh, grant opportunities through our workforce department. It's an integrated approach to how we deal with uh, talent management and access to talent challenges our businesses are facing. Uh, and then we need to go further by building pipelines from uh, high school to college. Uh, and even uh, I know the United Way, of which I'm a part of, is working on cradle-to-career initiatives to make sure we're delivering uh, on those business needs, not just now, but also creating the capacity 
for the future. I don't know, Barry, if you had anything you wanted to share on that. Well, I think you hit on a lot of it, um, Chairman. The the real issue obviously goes back to your heart, which is the taxes. You know, the, and as we said before, you know, 93% of it, you know, it's controlled by somebody else. What we really do is work hand in hand with businesses on some of the issues that drive their profitability. You know, we we do look at like our per- permitting process. If you're building a building, we we walk you through that process. That's how how Southern Wisconsin kind of got started is having a very tailored approach to helping businesses get in and deliver products. Uh, We have that same integrated approach to our permitting process now. Mm -hmm. That's something that we've fixed over the years. And we also um, have, again, work with the College of Lake County small business um, uh, unit over at the College of Lake County and Workforce Development Department to make sure it's easier for when you come, we can provide one-stop assistance to you as a small business. And I'll leave you with this. You know, we just had uh, uh, still in, in process, but we are making big strides in this area. And there are businesses that are locating in communities just south of the state line, uh, and they are doing that based on our uh, strong economy, uh, our access to talent, our, our thriving workforce, where they could have just moved a mile uh, or so up the road and been in Wisconsin. I think that's a tremendous. Um, accolade that shows what we are doing is working. And I think the, the last point is we've had businesses go to Wisconsin and come back. And part of that reason is you've got to look at the total tax. Our property taxes are high. There's no question. And you get that bill and you see it right there. But when you look at the cumulative tax, um, there's, there's a lot more to compare. And so we've, we've seen some of that reverse coming back uh, um, our way based upon their, uh, their actual experience uh, in Wisconsin. But if you are a small business, and you want to do business and you and you need assistance, please contact us. Okay, I'm going to give a couple little reminders. Um, again, if you cannot stay on the uh, meeting or listen, continue to listen to the meeting for the next uh, half hour or so, you can press 9 at any time and uh, leave us a voicemail. You can leave your question or your concern on the voicemail, but leave us your phone number or your email uh, so we can get back in touch with you. Also, um, county board members um, have e-newsletters that they send out regularly, so if you uh, give us your email, we can be sure to uh, sign you up for those newsletters so you can continue to stay connected with county government and with your county board member. Should we take a caller here? Yeah, let's go to Richard in Lincolnshire. Richard, you're on the line. Uh, yes, I was um, calling about uh, the appeals process that you mentioned you can appeal your real estate taxes, but I try to do it on my own, and I didn't have any luck. And I noticed that down the street from me is a lawyer who was able to reduce his taxes. So to me, it seems like you need to to know the system to get it to work. And also, the, the taxes are, are unreal. I just have a nephew who moved to tax, Texas because of the taxes. And I know my house, which is almost a half the size of my brother in Michigan, I'm paying more real estate taxes than he is by $100, even though his house is twice the size. Their sales tax is much lower than ours, and their income tax, now that we're, we raised our income tax rate again, is comparable to Michigan's. So you're saying you want more revenue maybe from the state but it's just a shell game. You're saying, okay, we'll get, do less real estate taxes, but then the state's going to want more income taxes. Well, I think the, the important thing to recognize here is, is we are doing more with less each and every day. Uh, so are other local units of government. It's easy to get angry at the units of government that we're paying property taxes to, and I think we all can do a better job. I, I, I think that any, any elected official that is just pointing the finger at another a unit of government like the county or their schools uh, without taking some of the blame is playing a big game of uh, a big shell game, as you mentioned. Um, we all have a role to play here. We're working to be more efficient. We're also working to uh, make uh, things more accountable and, and streamline processes. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, it's important, as you recognize, uh, to say that the, the state is really um, at a crossroads where they need to – Uh, be able to deliver uh, on reforms that make us more economically competitive. Uh, Illinois has lost more people collectively than any other state. We've lost uh, folks uh, each and every year. uh, And again, more people have left Illinois voting with their feet uh, than any other state in the union. Uh, Comparatively, Lake County's population has stayed relatively 
flat. I think that's a testament to our ability to diversify our, our economy, to make sure that we're um, growing the pie, uh, not just reaching into your pockets more. And so we're growing our sales tax base uh, as well as seeking to uh, attract businesses that are diversifying the property tax base through uh, balancing commercial growth uh, that doesn't have impact on school districts with residential growth that certainly does. And so it's something we need to make sure that we're working on. Um, there are a number of help centers. Uh, I know you know you, you said that uh, you felt the the process was maybe not as uh, equitable, but uh, we have one-on-one -on -one help centers uh, at the University Center on June 13th and 20th. Uh, that's it in uh, Gray's Lake, as well as at the CLC South Lake uh, campus down in my neck of the woods on June 4th. Uh, both run from 4 to 7 p.m., and they provide – I'm sorry? Yeah, June oh, 5th. June 5th. Uh, June 5th from 4 to 7 uh, p.m., and that allows taxpayers to get one-on-one -on -one assistance in really navigating the process. Uh, we're going to have one more uh, polling question on that, but I want to go next to Georgianne from Haynesville. Hi, Georgianne. You're on the line. Hi, Aaron. Um, I want to talk about transportation. I know it costs billions or millions at least dollars to put in an extra lane in traffic, but I was thinking the left turn lanes have been so effective in moving cars through traffic that we should look at some of our major intersections and put right turn lanes in. I think it would alleviate a lot of the congestion problems that we have throughout the county. I think that that's, that's a great suggestion, especially uh, in Haynesville, which I've been up there for SWALCO meetings and other things for, for uh, in the evening and rush hour. It is, it is gridlocked, and that impacts our ability to be uh, successful. And so uh, that's one of the things that, that we look at. Um, we also have one of the best systems, uh, the only systems in the Chicago region, called Lake County Passage. It seeks to not only make our transportation system uh, bigger expanding intersections and turn lanes where necessary, like you mentioned, uh, but make making our road system smarter through uh, better light timing and being able to be adaptable in cases of everything from emergencies like flooding that change traffic patterns uh, to when there's accidents. And residents can sign up for uh, updates, um, kind of get putting their home and their place of work, uh, the routes of travel, and they can get automatic updates as well as downloading our app for real-time information. Barry, did you have anything you wanted to add on, on transportation? Yeah, we actually created a hit list of you know those intersections where it just makes sense. Why can't we put in a right turn lane? A lot of those are on state roads, we go, and we we try to work with IDOT on those. On and it really has to do with whether they have right of way, what you know, and they have rules on when and they when they can and can't do that. But that is something that's a great suggestion. We did that years ago. You know, that's something that we can also revisit because that is a very effective way to improving those intersections. And one of the things that, that comes to mind is our One Voice, One Transportation Future consensus plan that really looked at a lot of the issues that, you know, Georgianne brought up. Uh, that was first initiated back in 2006 through a bipartisan effort of our legislators and county leaders that said, we're not going to focus on whose district it's in, uh, but where we can have the greatest impact. Uh, it outlined a list of... Uh, a little over a billion dollars in projects, and we're making progress on that, uh, but we need to make sure that we're focusing on areas where we can have the greatest ability to reduce traffic gridlock, regardless of uh, whether it's a state road or a county road or a local road. Folks don't differentiate that. All they know is that they're in traffic. Let's go in uh, straight to uh, another uh, caller. Uh, let's take Mary from Waukegan. Hi, Mary. You're on the line. Good evening. Wow. My question is about you mentioned about training and 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 uh and jobs for people with none uh college degrees. As I told the the gentleman that took my question, um that I have some college but I do not have a college degree and I'm over 50 and I would like to uh get into this training and one of these jobs for having none college degree. And where exactly is that at? Exactly. Exactly. And I, first of all, I appreciate your, your tenacity and your commitment. And uh, I wanted to tell you that right here in Waukegan, we have the Lake County Job Center uh, where you can uh, stop in or make an appointment uh, and, and talk to an individual um, counselor or one of our staff members who can 
give you ideas on, on ways that uh, you can enroll in retraining opportunities. Okay. The county gets incumbent, what are called incumbent worker training grants uh, through the state and federal government that uh, provide opportunities for us, uh, for businesses to retrain folks and for you to get direct assistance in retraining opportunities. Uh, there are other resources like the University Center. If you if you do want to focus on uh, degree completion, that's a place where you can access, I think, 19 different uh, universities and uh, other places from around the state um, that give you an opportunity to do that. But our workforce development team is absolutely committed to uh, being creative, being innovative, and responsive to what you want to do. Uh, and they have a great sense of uh, areas where jobs are in demand, but uh, their businesses can't find those individuals that they would like to hire uh, due to maybe a retraining need. And so they're able to match you up with those opportunities and uh, training grant uh, and other programs that will help you get there. So, Aaron, do we want to take another polling question? We can go back to transportation that yeah. we were just talking about a few moments ago. And as you were explaining, the county board um, has decided to dedicate 100% of the quarter percent sales tax into transportation. And that includes investing not only in county highways, but in those um, in those state projects that you mentioned as part of the consensus plan and those, those real you know gridlocked areas. So this question speaks to that. So do you support the county board borrowing responsibly to invest in state road projects that relieve congestion in gridlocked areas? And the, if you can press one for yes, two for no, or three, I don't know, maybe you just don't have enough information to make an informed decision. So do you support the county board borrowing responsibly to invest in state road projects that relieve congestion in gridlocked areas? And uh, we can keep that open for a couple more minutes if we want to uh, take another caller. Yeah, let's do that. I think it's important for folks to remember that when we are doing that borrowing, it's based off of our sales tax revenue, the quarter percent sales tax that was, um, you know, uh, supported by uh, the legislature a number of years ago. It's not coming out of property taxes primarily. So let's go right into our next caller, Roman from Gurney. You're on the line. What's your question? Hi, this is Roman. How are you, Aaron? Uh, good. Good to, good to hear from you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Same here. Uh, my co question is really simple. Um, uh, for you mentioned uh, mental health earlier. Uh, you know, it uh, they the health department uh, keeps cutting staff and the waiting times to see somebody for uh, intake to talk to uh, counsel counselors like about six to eight months. And, and it gets worse and it stays the same way every year. So that's a I think, concern. Yeah, I, I appreciate you, you reaching out and it's good to hear from you. Um, you know, this is an incredible passion of mine and it, it tracks right with what you're talking about. Uh, a couple of years ago, we were out doing our homeless uh, count, uh, trying to find unsheltered homeless people in the dead of winter. Not only does it help get them into shelters and services, but it predicates some of the money that we get to combat homelessness from the federal government. I was in the, the Vista West ER, and I met a guy named Terrence. He was my age. Uh, he was uh, homeless for the first time, bipolar, uh, and he used drugs within the last 24 hours. Uh, and he could not get an appointment to see a psychiatrist uh, for three months. And I thought, how can we expect uh, Terrence to stay housed and employed and get where he needs to go. If we can't deliver for him an appointment with a psychiatrist for three months, again, I think this is the greatest moral imperative our elected officials have the opportunity to make a difference in. I've uh, appointed and, and participated in a mental health coalition that's co-chaired by myself and uh, former state Senator Susan Garrett, and we are working to make sure that there's a continuum of care uh, from access to psychiatric services and counseling to permanent supportive housing when needed, uh, and making sure that our officers are trained to understand how to de-escalate a situation that they might come across uh, for somebody with a mental illness that is, um, you know, only in that situation but for the condition they're struggling with. Um, I, I think we're going to be able to deliver real results. Uh, the state's attorney and the Lake County Opioid Initiative are also working with people that have substance abuse, abuse conditions. All, uh, a lot of times, Individuals struggling with severe mental illness also have those co-occurring uh, um, disability or co-occurring uh, diagnoses, 
and it's important that we are uh, delivering a system that is equitable, that people that don't have the ability to pay are having access to the services. I believe we're going to be able to make a difference on that through this effort in the short term. So um, we are about 45 minutes into our meeting, and we're going to try to wrap up just about 8 o'clock. We still want to take as many callers as possible. But if you cannot stay on the line with us, um, you can leave us a voicemail by pressing 9. Just be sure to leave us your phone number and email so we can get back in touch with you if you um, have a specific question that you would, would like us to respond to. Um, so, um, Aaron, do you want to take another caller? Uh, yes. Um, let's uh, take Bobby from Antioch. Hey, Bobby, you're on the line. Yes, you guys kind of came into what I wanted to talk, mention with that last caller there. We were talking about all the things that Lake make Lake County great, and I grew up in the south, and I would tell you, Lake County is my favorite place in the world of all the places I've been. It's a wonderful place. My kids grew up here, and uh, my wife and I have been happy, very happy with Lake County. But I do think, and you mentioned some of the things you're doing to help combat this opiate epidemic i happened to watch a tv show last night about uh it was a information type tv and it showed this uh couple both of them were on drugs and uh by the end of the show they were almost crazy for they wouldn't quit taking drugs mm -hmm. i also worked while i was in college on a drug and alcoholic ad ward uh ward and we had uh we had drug addicts who would come in there, and the law in North Carolina said, if you come in here, you got to stay six months, and then you'll, they'll turn you loose. Everyone, every drug addict we ever had came back within a month after being released. Alcoholics came in maybe, they came in very seldom. But what I'm trying to say, the guys that I hang around with in my town keep saying that uh, the, the town they live in is, is the, easy to get drugs. It's easy to get any of the kind of drugs. And that just disturbs me. I went to a funeral last Saturday for a young man. And uh, I never saw him take drugs, but I understand he died from overdosing. And I don't care how good our roads are, how good our education is. Mm -hmm. If drugs take over Lake, Lake County, it's over. If you don't stop that, you're not going to have a future for Lake County. Thank you. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're really taking uh, the bull by the horns here, and and it is a. Uh, this is an epidemic that does not pay attention to your your race, your ethnicity, your age, your socioeconomic uh, situation, or the community that you live in. It is everywhere, and it is a pervasive problem that I think threatens the next generation and those uh, that uh, you know are, are living with uh, substance abuse addictions. Uh, it's something that we are very passionate about, and we're leading national models, nationally recognized opportunities um, for uh, for ways that we can make a difference in this area. There's a couple things that I want to highlight. Uh, Text a tip is a new program, a newer program that we're supporting, uh, and that the county board, uh, through our vice chair Carol Calabresa, led to make sure that kids. Uh, and, and really anybody have the ability to text a tip to, uh, to a, uh, a central um, receiving entity that has clinicians and other people that can respond. Uh, you know, that is, that is uh, a really a growing area where we're seeing success in our ability to communicate with youth because they're not calling 911. They want to text. Uh, and a lot of those, those things that we're receiving are information uh, on people that are concerned about friends that have drug addiction issues, bullying is a big problem, and mental health issues facing our youth. 30% um, of youth in Lake County are reporting some sort of mental health uh, condition, and so it's become our number one uh, mental health priority. Another thing that we're working on is the A Way Out program, where uh, Chief Gunther from Mundelein, uh, the police chief there, uh, has led on legislation that is waiting uh, signature before the governor. Uh, the Way Out program works like this. For individuals who uh, have realized the, that they have a problem, that they're tired of going through the cycle of uh, drug addiction, they can bring uh, their drugs, their paraphernalia, to participating police stations and get enrolled in services. Uh, the fact of the matter is, as successful we are as we are and can be in this issue, there simply aren't enough inpatient beds uh, particularly nearby, but really overall. And so we need to make sure that we have state partnerships and private partnerships that are able 
to uh, provide people with the treatment they need. Uh, this is really an issue that, uh, again, it impacts everybody, and it's something that really any family, any community, uh, any workplace uh, can fall victim to. So we want to make sure we're responding to that. And I want to, again, thank our Lake County State's Attorney and the Lake County Opioid Initiative for their work. They're doing tremendous stuff that, again, is setting the tone not just here in Lake County but nationally uh, for how we address this growing epidemic. Um, let's go right into our next caller. Um, let's take James from Lake Villa. Hey, James, you're on the line. Yeah, I have a question about you did such a beautiful road uh, job on Peterson Road. Uh, why do you only have a 45-mile-an-hour speed zone there when there's not even no cars on that trip? You can try to you do 45. That. The cars are pushing you off the road that there. I think they ought to raise the speed limit there a little bit. Well, we can certainly put that request over to uh, Shane Schneider, our director of uh, transportation and our county engineer. They look at safety, and we frequently do uh, do um, you know speed uh, studies uh, and um, to make sure that we've got a safe system that that moves efficiently. Uh, I agree. That is like our poster child for one of the roads I'm most proud of, because you can really uh, it really does open up a, a lot of gridlock. Uh, upper, you know, a lot of uh, gridlock and uh, and traffic congestion. Barry, you're more of an expert on this than than I am. I know enough to be dangerous. Well, that road that road was thought of the, by the county board uh, about 15 years ago, and we finally delivered that in conjunction with working with Gray's Lake, and that's a prime example of making ready available economic development sites uh, where we now put the infrastructure necessary to attract those businesses that are looking to expand in Lake County. Back to your question is on is obviously on the speed. Um, we hope that things do slow down by putting a lot of jobs out there. But in the meantime, we, they do have processes and state guidelines on how to conduct traffic studies, which determines the speed in which they set. And that's done by our engineering department. Chairman Muller, I just want to jump in because we're talking about tax tip and um, give the callers a little bit of information about that. If you're interested in tax tip, there is an app, and you can go to the app store and download Lake County Help. And that's how that works. You can also go to the county's website and, and search text a tip or search mental health, and there, there really is a wealth of information out there, too. Uh, well, we're closing in on our hour. I want to get into our, our final questions. But uh, first, let's take Travis from Gray's Lake. Good evening, Travis. You're on the line. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My question is uh, very simply this. I've read in the newspapers with uh, legislation that was p passed in the House and now pending before the Senate in regards to the county assessors. And mm -hmm. I understand the, count, the current county assessor has been appointed by the chairman and has been in office now for more than uh, 20 years right now. Uh, is there any other counter proposals being made since you made the counter proposals for the chairmanship to be in an elected position? Oh, so, uh, I appreciate that, that question. We want to uh, make sure we're getting right to, to uh, kind of the answer on that. Uh, there is a proposal in Springfield that is awaiting the governor's signature that would make the chief county assessor in Lake County uh, an elected position versus an appointed position. We're going to ask you a question on that in a second, uh, but I want to uh, first say that, uh, you know, as you look at this proposal, Cook County is the only Chicago region county that currently elects uh, their county assessor. Uh, not only uh, has that office been mired in scandal uh, and uh, voters recently rejected the uh, patronage and uh, corrupt uh, practices of inc longtime incumbent Joe Berrios, who is also the Democrat uh, countywide chairman uh, of, of his party. Um, my concern is is that uh, this is a professional position. Uh, I'm worried that this uh, legislation would actually remove the professional qualifications of the office. And I think in Cook County, what we've seen, it's our only example, but uh, you know, your, uh, the size of your uh, campaign contribution should not matter as much as the size of your house. The size of your house should matter more in determining your tax bill uh, than the size of your political uh, contribution. That's what we've seen in Cook County. But I want to hear from uh, our people on the line. Uh, the, uh, the legislation would require a, a referendum be put on the November ballot uh, asking you if you uh, think this office should be elected. So let's just uh, open that question up. Should the chief county assessor be elected by voters 
instead of appointed by the Lake County Board. Press 1 if you think we should, yes. I'll press 2 if you don't think that should be the case uh, for no. And 3, if you don't know or you need inf more information, again, press 1 for yes, 2 for no, and 3 for you don't know and you might need more information. Okay, we can watch those results come in. Chairman Lawler, as you said, we are um, closing in on 8 o'clock. Maybe we have time for another one or two callers, and then we can uh, share those results. Okay. Uh, let's take uh, Tim uh, from Lake Barrington, I think. Hey, Tim, you're on the line. Hello. Um, I, I wanted to call to just say what a wonderful job Lake County seems to be doing. Uh, we moved here a number of years ago from the Seattle area because we appreciated the open space, the amount of land that's been preserved, and, uh, and I think that that does a tremendous job of protecting the value in the home of the value of the homes that the your folks have i'd also like to respond to some of the folks who've talked about for instance the cost of education if we had a real estate person on the phone they'd say that the number one thing that people shop for is good quality schools and those cost money but in any way i just want to say you guys are doing a fabulous job i i do wish uh because of all the people who are leaving illinois in general that you do something about the weather Especially the winter. <laughs> well, thank you, Tim. I certainly appreciate uh, those those uh, kind words, and it's also a reminder that the county board serves double duty. Uh, we're elected not as county board members, uh, but also as forest preserve commissioners. And voters have uh, blessed Lake County with the ability to preserve land through referenda that you have supported. Uh, we're at the tail end of that referendum, and we've we've preserved. A lot of uh, a lot of key uh, habitats and uh, and land in Lake County. We have about 50,000 acres of dedicated open space, with the Forest Preserve uh, being responsible for about 35,000 of those acres. Uh, Lake County is also in, uh, home to more endangered species than any other county in Illinois, which makes us not just uh, a, a uh, you know, a thing that we treasure with open space, but also an attraction for things like birding and other things that are big business in, in Lake County and, and tourism and, and economic development opportunities. So uh, our open spaces are not just things that we protect and cherish, which we very much do, but they're an attraction for Lake County that we're very, very proud of and certainly feed into our quality of life. Um, and I think you, you definitely hit the nail on the head. Uh, it is a, it is a, a a double-edged sword there with property taxes and, and the quality of our schools because we are very proud of our schools. I'm a LHS, Libertyville High School uh, grad, uh, Lake Forest College grad, and a Lake Forest graduate, uh, School of Management uh, graduate, and I'm very proud of the education system we have right here in Lake County. Uh, but let's get into, uh, I guess, our last question. Oh, just, uh, share oh. the results of the, oh. um, quickly from our last polling question yep. um, when we asked about whether the chief county assessor should be elected by voters instead of appointed by the county board. Yeah. It shows that 38% of the callers on the line say that yes, uh, it should, and 36% say no, and 26% say I don't know, they need more information. So a razor-thin uh, margin there. I'd encourage you to get uh, um, you know, more information on that uh, proposal. It very well could be on the ballot uh, this year. Uh, but I also want to remind voters that uh, Lake County has a history of um, moving offices that are professional, technical positions that require uh, additional qualifications uh, to appointed positions. In 1978, we got rid of our auditor uh, as an elected position, made it an appointed professional. Uh, back in 1920, uh, the state legislature made the county engineer uh, a appointed position by the county board because of the need for more professionalism and not wanting a political manager uh, in that in that position. So if you have any questions on that, please uh, definitely look into it. You can always call my office if you have uh, questions. But uh, I guess with that, we're wrapping up in our, our hour. Should we ask our um, last polling question? Yeah. Um, so we want to know what you think about this telephone town hall. As Chairman Lawler mentioned, this is the third one. We held two last year, and um, th we're going to do one tonight, and then we have one planned for two weeks from now, and folks can sign up to get a call, and we'll call you. Uh, so we want to know what you think. So rate how valuable you found tonight's telephone town hall meeting. One, very valuable. 
two, somewhat valuable, and three, not valuable. Again, how valuable did you find tonight's telephone town hall meeting? One, very valuable, two, somewhat valuable, and three, not valuable. And just as a reminder, um, we're going to be ending the call pretty soon, but you can press nine before hanging up um, and ending the call to leave us a voicemail and um, give us your thoughts or ask a question or a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and let's take one more caller uh, while we're hearing those, those answers. We've got Jane from Lake Villa. Uh, Jane, you're on the line. Hi. Uh, this is a very Im uh, informative session. I've learned so much, and I'm I'm glad to be listening to this. And the the question uh, I had was uh, they need to look into the uh, – the way the lights work on the um, uh, traffic signals, because I feel that that's a lot of the gridlock that they have, because sometimes we go up to the lights and one or two cars goes through and then it changes, and I see a lot of cars going through the lights anyway, and I'm afraid it's going to cause a lot of accidents. And I know it's kind of a silly thing after hearing all the other things about education and everything, but I see so many times that there's almost an accident because someone got tired of waiting and they just mm -hmm. decided to go through. I think you're, you raise a very important point, uh, especially where you have intersections with railroads where it does impact light timing and people think that they might have longer of an opportunity. Uh, but that's where we have the opportunity to, you know, not only uh, download the Lake County Passage app, but also give your feedback uh, to Lake County Passage I've heard from residents who have reached out to our DOT team. Uh, they're a committed group of folks that are just outstanding in their ability to problem solve. Uh, while we don't have the authority always to change the light timing on state roads, we do work with IDOT uh, to the extent we can. Uh, and there's other opportunities there. Barry, do you want to maybe add into? Yeah, that? I think Lake County Passage is uh, unique to Lake County. Not very many counties have such a network where we have over 165 miles of fiber uh, that connects and interlock that to where they can time these lights out to where when you get a green, if you're going the speed limit, uh, then you'll get greens all the way through. Yeah, and 600 intersections, I think, uh, or 600 lights that we have. 600 lights. So, and I was just looking up the statistics as you were doing that. Um, and, and so we built out this network, but it, it seems like just a few years ago we began and we had, you know, just the lights that we control. Now we have a whole network of lights that include both the state lights, uh, local municipal lights and the county system. So we're trying to build that out to where when you start with the green, you can end with the green and get where you're going, get more throughput with the existing road capacity. Well, I think that's a very good point. And, you know, we uh, we have a lot of participation, much much more at the end of the call than we did last year. So maybe let's take one more, uh, one more caller. How about Jill from Gray's Lake? Hi, Jill, you're on the line. Hi, my name is Jill from Gray's Lake, and um, my question is, um, would you be willing to consider volunteer type of work in order to lower property taxes by ways of um, either working in the school district or public works or what have you in order um, to get the opportunity? Um, we, we uh, I, you know, to the extent we can do that, where we're also making sure that not only do we appreciate your time, that it's being used effectively, and that you're having, you know, a good experience out of that, uh, we do do that through things like our Sheriff's Auxiliary, which saves hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not close to a million dollars a year, uh, through people that donate thousands of hours of their time. I just last night presented a, a resolution passed by the county board to our auxiliary uh, unit. Um, some uh, will give over a thousand hours a year themselves, helping at local events, the, the summer uh, festivals that we're about to enjoy, uh, Vernon Hills Days and you know, Linden Fest and all those things. Um, and, and so that saves a lot of money. Uh, the state's attorney's office also uh, utilizes, um, in some cases, uh, pro bono legal service. I know uh, the the individual, uh, a great attorney uh, that uh, stood up our uh, alternative prosecution uh, program for first-time nonviolent offenders for really low-level offenses, make sure that they're paying their debt to society, um, you know, admitting guilt, uh, but also um, getting on the right track. Uh, that came from a volunteer who works here basically almost full-time for free. 
Uh, and so we do value those opportunities. We also have 300 uh, different uh, appointed positions that we rely on Lake County residents uh, to make critical decisions in key areas like our Zoning Board of Appeals, our, health, our Housing and Community Development Commission, which allocates and really directs where our federal uh, money is spent in that area, uh, the Board of Review, uh, lots of different areas. So go on our website, lakecountyil.gov, and you can click how to get involved, and it will uh, it'll give you some, some points. And if you have other ideas that we should be engaging in, uh, feel free to email me at alawlor at lakecountyil.gov. This has been a wonderful uh, call tonight. I want to thank everybody for participating. We actually got uh, more uh, folks engaged overall and more people staying through the whole hour. So maybe I was a little less boring this time. I sure <laughs> sure appreciate you joining in. Uh, again, this is part of our uh, effort to be more transparent and responsive to your needs. Really, your priorities are our priorities, and we want to make sure we're delivering for you uh, on it, on those where we have the authority to make a difference. Uh, I encourage you to connect on Facebook and Twitter and sign up for your board member e-newsletters. I'm really blessed to, to lead the county board. We have wonderful county board members uh, in all 21 districts. Uh, and again, you can visit our award-winning website, lakecountyil.gov, to learn more. If we didn't get to your question, I apologize. We tried to get to everybody we could. Please press 9 uh, to leave us a voicemail uh, as you depart this call. Be sure to leave your, your phone number and email so we can get back in touch with you. We'll listen and respond to all callers who left a voicemail along with their contact information. So, again, press 9 at the end of this call as you hang up, uh, before you hang up, uh, to be able to leave a message. Again, it's an honor to serve as your county board chairman, and thank you for joining our telephone town hall meeting this evening. Thanks, and have a great night.